and focusing on. The first piece of information we saw was different substances respond to heat transfer differently. Water and metal do not heat up at the same rate, and that's because of what's called their specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity is the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Okay? You saw that the temperature of the metal, the water, the air differed. When you put the piece of metal in your hand, even though it was at a high temperature, okay, higher than the air, it felt cold to you. So that is because of the specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. That's what we used yesterday in our calculations. So specific heat capacity for water is it takes one calorie to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. For all other substances, it's specific to the substance. This here is a formula that we can use involves specific heat capacity. CP is the abbreviation for specific heat capacity. It is used to measure heat transfer. So the equation is Q is equal to the heat. M is the mass of the sample. CP is the specific heat capacity of the sample. And this is the change in temperature. When you measure the change in temperature, it's always the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Now this equation measures the amount of heat that is transferred. So let's say we had some hot water at 70 degrees and we poured it onto, we have 50 grams of hot water over here and we pour it onto 59 grams of brass and this brass is at 20 degrees Celsius. It says the final temperature is equal to 65.2 degrees Celsius. It asks us to show that energy is conserved. Energy is conserved means that the energy transfers. So when we add the hot water to the piece of metal, what's going to happen to the metal? It's going to heat up. So you're adding energy to the metal. The amount of energy that's added to the metal is equal to the energy that's lost in the water. The water transfers all of its energy to the metal would mean that the energy is conserved. So to do this, we need to find out what Q would be for the water and what Q would be for the metal. So Q for the water. From the water's point of view, there's how many grams of water? 50 grams of water. And the specific heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is the final temperature, which is 65.2 minus the initial of 70.0 degrees. So to calculate this out, we take the 65.2 minus the 70. That should give us a negative 4.8 times 1 times 50 gives us a negative value of heat, 240 calories. So that means the water is losing 240 calories of heat. So it's a negative value, which makes sense because the water is decreasing in temperature. The Q for the brass is equal to 59 grams of brass. Then we have to look up the specific heat capacity of brass. So in our lab, it said the specific heat capacity of brass was 0 0.090 calories per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature for the brass, it went from 65.2 as its final temperature minus the initial of 20 degrees. And if we calculate this out, 65.2 minus 20 times 0 0.09 times 59, if we did this correctly and energy is conserved, these numbers should be the same. Now, what's different about the two numbers? They're both 240 calories, but what's the only difference you notice? One's negative and one's positive. The negative just means where the energy is transferred. So negative means it's losing heat. Positive means it's gaining heat. Okay. So sometimes people even say if something's losing heat, it's exothermic. So from this point of view, the water is experiencing an exothermic process and the brass is experiencing an endothermic process.
right? which makes sense because all the energy is being transferred. So this showed that the energy is conserved in this example. Let's say we had the specific heat capacity of copper was 0 0.09. How many calories of energy are needed to heat 10 grams of copper from 25 to 35? So what equation do I need for this? It's the same one. It begins with the letter what? Q equation. So mass, change in temperature, specific heat capacity. So the mass is how many grams for this copper? 10 grams. Change in temperature goes from 35 to 25, which is a difference in 10 if we want to do that. And then specific heat capacity of copper is that 0.09. If we multiply these out together, 0 0.09 times 10 times 10, that equals 9 calories. That's all you have to do for a problem like this. Now, do you think you would need fewer calories or more calories to heat up 10 grams of water from 25 to 35? What's different than water than brass? Is the mass different? Nope. Is temperature change different? Nope. What's the only thing that's different? Specific heat capacity. Instead of it being 0 0.09, it's 1, 1. So 1 times 10 times 10 would equal how many calories? About 100. It's a lot more calories to heat up water. That's because water has a larger specific heat capacity. Now, if you turn to page 93 and 94, you can see this graph here. This is a graph showing changes in temperature as you heat water from solid to liquid to gas. This happened in our lesson number six, where we took ice and we melted it. What did you notice happened to the temperature as the ice was melting? Lesson six, over the 20 minutes, what happened to the temperature as it melted? Went down for some of you. For others of you, it stayed about the what? Stayed about the same, even after a lot of time. The reason for this is you had, a, you had ice at its melting point. If you look at this graph, what is not changing right here at the melting point? Temperature is not changing. There is no change in temperature. This is called a change in phase. This is called the melting point. This is where you have solid and liquid. In this case, for water, it's zero degrees Celsius, approximately. So in order to take a solid that's below zero, you have to heat it up first till it gets to zero degrees. Then when it gets to zero degrees, all the heat you're adding is melting the ice. Then once it all becomes a liquid, you add more heat to it, its temperature will go up until it reaches another plateau. What's the second plateau at? 100 degrees, which is the what point of water? Boiling point. That's where you have a liquid and a gas. Anytime you boil water on a stove, if there's still liquid in there, it's at 100 degrees. It's always going to be at 100 degrees. It doesn't matter how long you heat it up for. It's only if you capture the gas and heat the gas alone can the temperature be above 100. One way of doing this is you can actually superheat a gas so its temperature is way above 100 degrees and you can light a match with water vapor by raising the temperature. Okay. Phase changes, during a phase change, the heat transferred to or from a substance does not result in a change in temperature. It just results in a change in phase. So where is that heat going? Why doesn't it raise the temperature? When a substance changes during heating, energy must be supplied to overcome the attractions between molecules. So in a solid, you have more attractions between the molecules. In a liquid, there's still some attractions. That's why liquids tend to stick together. In an ideal gas, are there any attractions between the molecules? No, not if it's an ideal gas. There's no attraction. They bounce off elastically. So in this case, in order to get something from a solid to a liquid, do we have to add energy or remove energy? <coughs> We've got to add energy. The amount of energy is called the heat of fusion. If we are adding energy to a, a system, a solid, is it, is it going to be an endothermic or an exothermic process from the solid's point of view? Is the solid gaining or losing heat? Okay, it is gaining heat from the environment, so this is called an endothermic process for the melting of a substance. When it goes from liquid to a gas, it is also endothermic. 
Now, what happens if you have gas in the air called humidity and it forms a cloud? What phase of matter is a cloud? Water, liquid. liquid water. So, if it's going from gas to water, the process is not endothermic, it's what? Exothermic. If it's exothermic, that means it's releasing heat to the environment. So as you make a cloud, it heats up the air around it. As it heats up the air, what does the air do? Yeah, the air is absorbing the heat. It causes any clouds around it to disappear. It also causes the air to rise. So when a cloud is formed, it's not just a simple process of it condenses, forms a cloud, and that cloud stays right where it is. That's why clouds appear and disappear so quickly. You can look right at a cloud and part of it just disappears for no apparent reason. That's because of the condensation actually increases the temperature around it. And that causes less condensation and vice versa. So you have those two competing factors when you have gases turning into liquids.